There is a measles outbreak happening in western Texas. And as of this recording, one child has died. Some people are blaming this on the shedding of the MMR vaccine. Now, what is shedding? And can that really happen from the vaccine? Or is this happening because there is increased spread because of decreased herd of immunity because a large percentage of this population wasn't vaccinated? Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. David Berger, a board-certified pediatrician in Tampa. I am one who believes that parents should weigh the risks and benefits of any medical intervention, including for vaccines, in order to make this the best decisions for themselves. But ultimately, it is their decision. It's their child. And I will, I will respect and support that. Now, also to be understood, we do give vaccines in our practice. We have a refrigerator full of vaccines. Vaccines are given on a daily basis. But again, it's up to the choice of the family. And we are one of the few practices that does not kick families out because they choose not to vaccinate or to vaccinate in a way outside of the typical schedule. Now, also in our practice, as a point, we also have many different areas where people can be isolated so that if they come in for any sick visit, we put them in their own room. We put them in their own place. We hang them in the car outside on the bench to make sure that there's not a spread through the waiting room. Now, in terms of this measles outbreak, as you can imagine, I'm getting asked lots of questions about it. So some of the details. It started about a month ago in January. And so far, as of this recording, there have been 124 cases in this community. And 18 of them have been hospitalized, and that was almost always for respiratory concerns. As I mentioned, one child has died, and that was the first death from measles in America in over 10 years, 2014 in specific. Now, of the, of the people who caught this, most of them were not vaccinated, including the child who did pass away. Um, and it is also known that herd immunity, we've talked about herd immunity and COVID and all things. If enough people do not have immunity against a disease, it spreads through a community, especially something that's as contagious as measles, which is one of the most contagious viruses in the world. So if, if there's not, so whether that's because it's an under-vaccinated population or those who don't have enough, or whether it's, you know, the only other way you catch herd immunity that you get immunity is from having measles yourself already. That's it. So in terms of this virus itself, and I'm not going to go into the big details of the type of rashes and the oral spots, you can look that up, but it, um, it's there are about one in five people who do catch measles do end up hospitalized among children. Now, one in 20 will get pneumonia, and the, pneumonia is the number one cause of death in children, especially in, in young children. One in a thousand will develop encephalitis, and encephalitis can cause um, seizures, it can lead to deafness. It can lead to intellectual disabilities. And about one to three out of every thousand um, children who catch measles will die. So, you know, obviously that's a small number. But, of course, if it's your kid or your family member, then that's a big number. Now, as far as the measles itself, it does start off as a general flu-like illness. Kind of the way the chicken pox does, too. A lot of viruses do that. So you don't see the rash right away. You don't see the big time major disastrous things that can happen. It just starts off with fever, chills, not feeling really good, maybe some cold symptoms. Now, in terms of the vaccine itself. So it's part of the MMR vaccine. Back when I started um, for about the first 10 years of my career, we were able to give the measles, mumps and rubella separately. But those are no longer available in America. It's just the MMR vaccine. Now, this is what's called an attenuated vaccine. It's a live virus vaccine, unlike most of the other vaccines. But attenuated means that it was genetically altered in order to not cause the severity of the disease that measles itself can cause. Now, it, it is an, an RNA. It is a live virus. But um, so and to be clear, that does not mean that the measles vaccine is messenger RNA. It's not an mRNA virus uh, vaccine. It's, it's just most viruses are RNA as opposed to DNA. But there are some vaccines such as in the herpes family that are DNA viruses. Now, the RNA itself, the genetic material itself can be identified up to 30 days on a nasal swab when a person's given a shot in the arm. So it does move throughout the body. It does not just stay local to the area. Um, but um, the thing is, is that when they identify it on a sub, you can differentiate it between the wild disease versus the vaccinated form of the virus be um, um, because the, the, the RNA sequencing is different and that's easy to identify with the proper um, technology. Now, in terms of does it work? It does. 
93% of people will get protection long-term with one single dose of the vaccine. And those who get two doses get 97%, which does, of course, mean 3% of people, even if they get both vaccine doses, are still not protected. Okay. Now, in addition to that, one of the things that most of the families in my practice choose to do if they've had one vaccine is before getting the second dose, which is typically done before elementary school starts, you can get an IgG titer. It's an antibody level to see if the protection is there. Overwhelming majority of time, and as I said, 97% by that number, you don't need a second vaccine. If you have beautiful protective antibodies, then there's really no benefit to getting the second dose. And then whatever level of risk it is, there's only risk. So I check the levels and then we can then the family can decide if they wish to go ahead to get that extra um, extra percentage points of potential protection. Now, in terms of this whole thing with vaccine shedding, OK, and I know that's what kind of like what um, my headline is here. The reason why I'm bringing this is because there are people in the um, who are anti-vaxxers who are claiming that the vaccine itself is shedding, that the measles component is being shed, and that's being passed along to other people, and that's what's getting people sick. In fact, one of the people um, that um, one of the quotes actually said from um, that was on a very popular um, posting that went viral said th the narrative is that a failure to vaccinate. Pardon me. The, na the narrative is that it's a failure to vaccinate the spread of the disease when we know that it's a failing vaccine. I'm sorry. There is no evidence whatsoever that this is a failing vaccine. If that was the case, people, there would be people who were not who were vaccinated who are getting this. Whereas almost all of the people who are in this outbreak in West Texas, they're not vaccinated. It seems to have started in a Mennonite community where they had low vaccination rates. And that seems to be what allowed it to take hold because it seems as if if less than 90 percent of a community is not vaccinated, it's an opportunity for the vaccine to spread a lack of herd immunity. Now, as f but live virus shedding can happen. In fact, polio is a perfect example. So the original, original polio vaccine was a shot. It then later on got turned into an oral dose. You, if you're of a certain age, you remember, may remember a sugar cube, or you may remember drops being put into your mouth. And those were oral li um, live vaccine. And there was advantages to that because it did give a stronger immunity, but also it um, it could be passed along to others. So I could say a parent who is changing a diaper or whatever um, could get a little bit of the, of the attenuated form of the vaccine themselves and give them additional boost. However, as polio became completely eliminated in America, there were about 10 cases of, honest to goodness, all the polio disease symptoms from that oral polio vaccine. And that happened about 10 times. So eventually it was discovered that, well, if all of the cases of polio in America were coming from the vaccine, we got to change it. And so they went back to the original injected form, which was not a live virus. And of course, no one's had polio from a vaccine since then. But in terms of the MMR, OK, I have looked, I've searched, I've looked at case reports, I've looked on PubMed. I have seen no evidence that people are getting measles disease from the MMR vaccine. And I haven't seen that happen, certainly in my practice either, although the national numbers are a lot bigger than mine. Um, now, there are people um, who are stating that those um, that those who are sick um, um that the reason why they're not finding it that it's that it's the vaccine form is because they're not testing these individuals. That's false. Texas is reporting and they're checking every single kid who has measles and able to differentiate um, through PCR testing, whether it's the wild measles or the vaccine strain that's of the measles. And every case so far has been wild. It has not been from the vaccine. So that's just flat out misinformation that's being spread out there. And, you know, while I understand and want to help educate people and I realize people are looking things up online, I realize a lot of people look to me to try and sort all th through, through all of this in order to help make the best decisions. But I'm just the things that are being said about it and um, relative to the vaccine itself. It, it's just, it doesn't hold water. It just not, it doesn't get it for me. Now, can the vaccine itself, the MMR, get you sick? It can make a kid sick. It can cause a fever. It can cause a rash. It can cause flu-like symptoms, fever. Um, a lot of vaccines can do that as well. And I did see two kids earlier in my, in my practice. Now, granted, this was over 20 years ago. Came to me with autism, who both parents thought that their kids, the vac their autism was triggered by the vaccine. Now, I don't ask people, do you think that the, a vaccine triggered this? I ask, do you think that anything in particular triggered your kid's autism? And I leave it open-ended. 
Okay. And even to this day, sometimes I will have patients who say, parents who say, yeah, I did see a change after the vaccines. Okay. But these two kids individual in, in particular, through detoxification, through improved nutrition, improved lifestyle, dietary, etc., they were recovered. They were ready to start kindergarten in regular classes. They then went to their local pediatrician. So I was seeing them more for the specialty care, not for, and both of them at their local pediatrician's office, they got a second dose of MMR and both of them regressed back into autism. Now that's a very rare thing. And I haven't seen it in 20 years more. So is it a common thing? No, but I have seen it twice. So, you know, do that, do that with you want. Now, also I have a patient who with level one autism, which is the mild uh, autism, who did have a pretty moderate um, anaphylactic reaction from it. Um, within about 15 minutes of the vaccine, started with this barking cough. When I listened with the stethoscope, there was not a lot of air movement, then broke out into a rash head to toe, and then face swelled, head swelled to double its size. And it was very, very dramatic. Now, we gave the kid a dose of Benadryl, and the kid, within a half hour, things started to settle down, and he was really quite fine by the end of the day. Interestingly, the parents and the grandparents um, reported that the day afterwards, this kid had a really big jump in his social skills, his eye contact, his length of conversations, being around the family, more affection. And this happened the next day to the point where the parents jokingly said, well, maybe we should have given him the MMR vaccine sooner because of all of these improvements that we saw. So, you know, I think it's important when I... And, and from a transparency perspective, I share all of the different types of observations that I've seen. And so, of course, I, I wanted to share that part of the story as well. Now, can measles itself be treated? The answer is yes. The World Health Organization and the CDC, as part of its measles playbook, says high dose vitamin A for two days can be used to treat measles. 100,000 units, according to the CDC and World Health Organization for Young Children. Pardon me, 200,000 units per day. These are once a day doses for, um, for like teens and adults. Now, if you've been a practice of ours, you've heard me when we talked about COVID, that as part of our immune support protocol, high dose vitamin A is part of that. It's those similar types of doses that we use. And we do that at the start of any kind of illness, because again, measles doesn't start off with the rash and, and the horrible stuff. It starts off with a more viral type of illness. Now, I know I've shared with people, and just to kind of put it out there for you, if you do want access to our immune support protocol and all of the other protocols that I have for treating coughs and colds and COVIDs and RSVs and stomach bugs, if you join, if you become a Patreon member of ours, you will be able to have access to it there. And any patient of mine, so if you live in Florida, you don't have to be local to me, I can do video, or anybody outside of the state of Florida who wishes to do an educational consultation, we do have all of that information available in our portals to get all of the dosing details for all the different age groups. So if you want that information, it's there for you. Now, in terms of can the measles and the MMR reactions be minimized? In my opinion, the answer is yes. First and foremost, check vitamin D and zinc levels on every human, which is what I do, at, by one years of age. And I make sure that they have really good vitamin D and zinc levels. Now, I, and in general, I aim for the middle part of the reference range, not just getting by. That to me is a good way of knowing you're getting enough, a nice robust amount, but it's middle of range, can't get in trouble. Now, you, one caveat, you do not want to take high dose vitamin A if you're pregnant. That could cause a problem to the fetus. So don't do that if you're pregnant. So overall, um, what's my summary? Well, the best way to avoid getting measles is no doubt, unless you've had it already, is to get the vaccine. Again, you could do what you want in terms of weighing the, the pro versus con of it. But to me, it is a fact the best way to avoid the measles is to be vaccinated. Um, you know, but overall, you have to make that decision for yourself. So as I've said before, your health, your choice. But let us know what you think. Please make a comment um, down below and let us know what you think about it, whether you felt this was helpful, whether you think that this was hogwash, whether you have your own beliefs. But we really do like to get um, comments and to continue our conversations there. So have a great day.